Good, good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to see you all. It's making me sad to think that we're coming to the end of our visit here. Um, but it's, uh, it's time for us to start talking about reviewing the concepts we've discussed. <laughs> so the practice questions, we will ask you to answer them after tea. And it's probably best we'll ask you just to do them as individuals and then we'll discuss uh, what we think are the best answers together. And tomorrow the test that we give will be a similar form to that. Okay, so today we thought we would just do a big review of all the things we've talked about so far this week. We started with Charles Darwin, who as a young man took, up, took off on this big adventure to observe the natural world. Once he got home to England, he took a very, very long time, decades, to analyze what he had observed. But his big ideas were that populations and ecosystems and the environment interact. So organisms affect their environment, the environment affects the organism. That doesn't sound like a big revelation, but the way Darwin adapted it, it was. So far, any child could tell you those first two things that Darwin uh, spelled out. But Darwin realized that organisms that fit with their environment well are successful, where success means to have some offspring that take on their traits to the next generation. So in that sense, the environment selects the organisms that continue on in the living world. That process is called natural selection. What's the evidence that natural selection or that that things have changed over time. We talked about the fossil record, where you can see that in the deepest layers of the earth, you can find some very primitive and old, old, old organisms. In general, the layers that are closest to the top have more recent uh, uh, plants and animals. In the city where I live, sometimes they dig to make a building or to put in a pipe or something, and they'll find way up there very recent remains of Indian peoples of Native American peoples who had just been there before white people. So 
the enemy ring mo madigi ni judo na jung yu rest so from bottom to top is almost like a, a time zone from going from more ancient to more recent fossils ta nda tu judo tang ta ena na nga mo ning shu di di chal yu rest de ni ya ya yu do ena sar sar ni yu rest judo the other evidence we have that uh strengthens the notion of evolution is this chik thanda ngon zo gurdo thanda phejur lake shidu pangda shi gurdo ni shi gyo ras ni ba de ni thanda di chal yu rest pangda if i looked at a whale i probably say oh my gosh what a big fish tang zo vel la dusta wai na khari sangur la na nya di chao la sangur ras nya chimbu jidu sangur ras yet this animal is a mammal whose ancestors lived on earth and went back to the sea the inadi simjen di khari chadu la na ajo nusu simjen la ne ro din simjen de ri ti res un quran su gi mevo de ju ma khol yor la na kya su na yor res it's fin here has the same similar arrangement of bones as we do in our arm quran su gi tanda shokpa ji da di na lu ruba ta na khari ro chadu la na ajo la pa lu ruba sta di do yor res chakodi there's a very tiny remnant of bones that are probably related to a leg ta de la lama ruba rula jura di ta wa na de chunju jures di peje ta kangbal hama kangbai ruba hama di ingres de and fossil records have found an animal that's in that's even farther back that has bigger leg bones that's a that's a whale ta na shi whale ki ta da gurdo na ta du wala nyama de jul khari ro na ta da ruba di tis che res hama di di la du tis ruba kangbai ruba di che nyama gurdo na la di ni res the whale has lungs it births its we call them calves with from a uterus ani quran so lo lo uterus am tan na she pu khatu ki ro di di tan na jo ngel ni ma tu jo de leji cha di res am quran so na ngel yo res it nurses its young with mother's milk and takes care of its young for a very long time tan na she pu ki de ani pu de ame o ma tu yo res ani ama di pu so jo jo rin bu chi yo res So this is another idea that strengthens the notion of evolution that this very look different looking organism has many similarities to us. Di la duta di socha dil ta ana ani mandro shu jures ra ine ngoy ta ana din ni kharir la na george mu cha dures mi da vel ni. And these kinds of clues are how we put together the phylogenetic tree that we'll talk about again in a minute. Di la duta na ngon ye ruba da din de ta do as di chang me gen ngon jo than da phelrum gi So all these mammals that don't look to me anything like here's something that looks like a bird, here's something that looks like a fish. This is a cat obviously and this is us. They don't look that the, that similar in some ways to me. Ta tanda dos ta du gala di sheja kharir lana ye no so semje res di sheja o thong semje di. Ine ta o sam ghar tulan khebar thong do as. di semjen di ta du gala socha di chu cha do stung do as an di nya do stung do as di shimi do chen phage mi ro as things that are similar between species we can call homologies ta ta na an jo semje ta na socha pha chu phen ju chikwa in jo jora thunge di la khala wor la na ni homology la yo res this bone in us is called a humerus di rubash do di ming la humerus la yo res se udila and all of these mammals have something that is a humerus either in their wing or in their fin and so on. Tell na shi humerus la robosh to di shi je to na so je shi je na yores. Ka shi na ho ro na ta da shop na yores cha yin ba na nya ro sha je na nya ro shop ro sta da ma dil di na yores. Likewise they have the bones that are the same as our forearm. Tell na shi la ba dun ji do di ngi ro ba di an ro ro cha de res sim je ni jo na. Our wrist. Na ngon ju gi ta da chi ju ro di chi to di. And our fingers. And also to go there. They look very different but they have the same basic idea and blueprint. And ta du ma do do sto as ine samju din ta wa na thama ni chu do di chi ba cha de res shi jan. These changes we discuss the timeline very much which is still on our back wall. These changes came over periods of the time that are hard for us to understand or imagine. Ta ta da tu ju ju ra ju tu di ban tu ju as di ro di gyo ro di tu ju na te wa na ju gi sam lo na ma shong ro ji cha yo re s remember if this would be when the earth is born about four and a half billion years ago ta ta mo di se ko la di ko ju ya di tu ju re s pa yi ta mo ko ju ge di ani te bom shi ta cha ba sam si cha yo re s the first life was about a billion years later the first single celled prokaryote 
Sai bola thangbo shi chai shi da chhas chhayar lara di gijela ani therbum gijela ani chhe so thangbo di chhur lani shi di res. We didn't get a single celled organism with a nucleus till about here, past my elbow. Things sort of picked up so that by my palm, plants and animals are, are diversifying quickly. But humans are just the tip of my fingernail all the way out from my shoulder. It's hard for me to imagine this idea of billions of years, but sometimes a, a, a graphic helps me. We hit briefly the first time on the mechanism of how genetic material is passed on. Inside of our nucleus are these structures called chromosomes. Humans have 23 pairs, one from each parent. This chromosome is a very highly condensed um, collection of, eventually, of, of DNA. The DNA the mambo shoes ya tumba ina sra ya dua ina tumba ina ani di duna kare chagir lana chupung di chagir res. It's wound up and coiled up and coiled up until something that we can't even see has a meter of DNA. Di la du gala chik chini thambo shi mambo shoes ti ra an chik na di du gala di chupung lagir res an di malu o ina meter mambo shi chagir res. All our cells have the same DNA and the blueprint for all of our traits and everything that our cell does really is in this molecule. The business part, the action part of this molecule are these four letters of the alphabet that spell out all of our traits that are passed on to our offspring. It's a very clever and successful design such that now all organisms use DNA to be their genetic material. These four letters of the alphabet always meet their perfect partner in this double-stranded molecule. So if the DNA is trying to make a sentence, it only has four letters of the alphabet repeated many in different combinations many times. So the four letters of our genetic alphabet and DNA are A, T, G, C. That's okay. Can I get everything? Okay. So his question is, his question is, is it the same sequence that you have mentioned here, like A, C, G, C, A, C, is it the same sequence in all? Different chromosomes have different genes. So no, every chromosome will have some different, different, to, to get everything that makes us us, the chromosomes have different genes on them. But let's say this is chromosome number two. 
Every cell that is, every chromosome 2 in every cell has this same DNA. But chromosome 2 doesn't have the same DNA as chromosome 3, 4, 5, or 6, or we wouldn't have 100 chromosomes exactly the same. In fact, if you get an extra chromosome, if you get an extra chromosome 2, if somehow instead of having a copy from mother, a copy from father, and then an extra one, that organism dies. Any other questions while our technical experts are working? Any tuition by US? No. I don't know if you have mentioned that A pairs with G, right? So is there a possibility? A pairs with T. T, yeah. So is it is there a possibility that A pairs with G? Is there a change in sequence? That would be a mutation, but there are mechanisms in the nucleus for the cell to fix that error usually. Oh, <laughs> We didn't talk I'm sorry. We didn't talk about it, but there are molecules in the cell just made to protect the original sequence and keep it there to, so to fix mistakes. So mutations can be mistakes that just were not fixed. Because they don't fit together properly and the DNA looks funny. One set of the, these are called bases. These base pairs are, one of them is more bulky and one of them is small, so they can fit together in this same space. If two of the bulky ones meet, it would make a, a, a dimple, it would make a wart or a bleb or something that would be picked up as, a, as, as disrupting this beautiful spiral. Well, the so the speciation, you talked about new yeah. forming new species. So in that, uh, do you say that there is a change in DNA because of that a new species is formed? Certainly a new species would require many changes in many genes to become a completely new species usually. 
Rigze chik rang mares ni rigze mangbu shu ju jo du gores dinal. Rigze mangbu jo du de ani ni sao ju du gores. A new species generally requires a long period of time to occur. An ta na shi ni sao ju du bala tuzu ringbu shu gor gores. Unlike other mechanisms of evolution that are catastrophic, like a meteor makes dust and all the dinosaurs die. That and that cha sha na rang chung ham na lakang ye mangbush thi dos pe sha na kar do ro hop ta me sa wa na di ki king ge dinosaur ro tum ro ro cha sha na hop ta me sa dong cha ro din de na ni su lo ga res oh here we go why don't you like to explain it <laughs> so the reason why a and t go together is because you see how some of the bases have two rings they're bigger and some just have one ring so they're smaller Oh, that and that person you are, cha cha day you are, a that thing. This time when that and that day, that person is happy, that happy or not, when that day you rest, they go and that day they are happy. Day that when that go go need us, long do need us. Day that when that long chick do us, they do that when that day chung a che day che you rest, they go and that day. So that's A and that's T. And that A la day you are happy, day day they can do that day rest, and T they can do that day rest. They also interact with each other, shown by these dotted lines. These atoms like to be close to each other. The penjun dewa chio tungu yores de de chek chunju inde tuen doa. Di du jen ningi para tuen doa chek chunju de. Di kare chunju yor lao ena. Ani kora ni penjun dewa di tungu yores. Ni ga niu di yores di ni de. So DNA won't look like won't will not look right if you tried to put A with either C or G. It wouldn't work. The che zang ani tan da DNA na la. A dang G ya na A dang C ni ba na la chi ma res ta da di yo ma res. Okay, so in this you have shown the bigger chemical is on this side. Sometimes can it be possible that a bigger chemical is on the other side? Yes, that works okay. Oh, you rest. So DNA is like a ladder. And it has to be the same width the whole time. That the kids are doing DNA. And the other thing is, 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 the Oh, di lea cie o resta, di na cia sa o na cie o di de doa. An tanda di ni o di lta di cie o di sujo tin doa, sen di o res. But you can't put right the two different ones together; they don't fit. Ina ya, ta tanda di ni jiu gia o na ni ga niam do ta da tuingu min doa, di ro cia o res. And it's pretty cool that the actually the way those bases bind and the way the backbone is that it automatically starts making this spiral. And the drops have a lot of rangshingi kare chayi or lawana chusu chayi jdo DNA chusu chayi uris. We mentioned this notion that we have different versions of the gene because we came from two parents. The lado manzo rigze lado rigze kora lan number manda yoras. The lado kaya is na chik pani chik mani li yoras. Different versions of genes are, are called alleles. It's simple. Alleles are not something magic. It's just a version of a gene. So this is good old chromosome 2 again from my mother and my father. I'm carrying a gene for brown eyes as well as blue eyes. These are alleles for eye color. Tak ada ngalah rigzi tau, ada rigzi kadu migi kadu jamu yang yores, tau nasi mumbu yang yores. Di la kar la orang la, tapi di ni elil cahdi orang. There might be my brother or sister that has both alleles are brown eyes. Tapi ni jojo dah aja tau, ada kunci nala elil tau, ada elil ni ka kari cahdi orang la, jamu di res. Or both alleles are blue eyes. Tau nasi di nala tau, ada. It just depends on what possibilities I got from my parents. And you may recall we mentioned the word dominant, where some alleles are dominant over others, so this person will look brown-eyed. 
This person will look brown eyed, this person will look blue eyed. And di midi cha shawana kurangi migi kado hariyorlana gyamu yures. Di cha shawana migi kado mumu yures kurana. Okay. I, I put this in because I tried to show the movie yesterday of chromosomes separating. The deep part di tuin is tanda kiranzolin yel tapshi kari chinglana tsubun di yama dre jura yama kagedi. Di ani longin al tuin di chins tapshi chins. These are photos from cells that are clear. So this shows very nicely a cell about to divide. They show it as this animal, this organism has two chromosomes, two sets of chromosomes. A light blue and a dark blue of each chromosome from each parent. So four total, two sets. And this super condensed stuff up here is the actual photo of a cell with lots more than two sets of chromosomes with all the DNA starting to condense like this. They come closer and closer together till all the chromosomes have lined up in the middle in a perfect line. The cell starts to divide, these star like structures start pulling them to the corners of the nucleus, the corners the different ends of the, of the nucleus. And the new nucleus is going to pinch off and have two exact sets. Each daughter cell is exactly the same then as the mother cell that it started from. So the big picture is just the dividing cell ends up with the same DNA that the mother cell started with. We talked about Dar Darwin's four postulates. So remember, Darwin said that a population has variation. That's just naturally how it is. That variation can be inherited or passed on to the offspring. Darwin never heard of the word DNA. There are not infinite resources in the world for all the different species. Those organisms that passed on traits that are uh, best suited for the environment will continue to succeed and have more offspring. And the mechanism of that is gradual, one of the mechanisms is very gradual change in DNA by mutations. We also talked about these phylogenetic trees. The idea is that we share, this is for vertebrates, so these are animals that have a backbone. All these animals here are animals that are currently alive. Delta 
We all vertebrates started from some kind of a common ancestor. And over long, long periods of time, certain um, branches of this tree gave rise to different kinds of organisms. As we get farther from the ancestor and more different uh, kinds of animals are branching off, we go forward in time. The more closely two animals had a common ancestor, in general, the more alike they are. So, for example, these are both mammals, and they're more closely related than we are to this weird mammal. That I only want. These two are more closely related than this and a shark. And sometimes it's a little surprising a bird was more closely related to a dinosaur than it would be to uh, a frog. And now that we, this is adjusted as people figure out more and more, but one big thing that has helped uh, scientists decide on who's closely related is, is the existence of DNA and the ability to read those bases. But the idea of a phylogenetic tree is that there is a common ancestor. The farther away you are, the closer you are to, uh, in time to that ancestor, the more you might look like it. This is just another phylogenetic tree, sort of typical. Here are the vertebrae, again, animals that had some kind of a backbone. The shark has a backbone that's all cartilage. And it's been so successful and in its environment, there's not been no selection to make other branches from it. These vertebrates had bones. These two crocodiles and birds are more closely related to a common ancestor than primates and birds. This something here was the common ancestor of all things. Something here was the common ancestor of just these two. Something here was the common ancestor of just these two. The common ancestor refers to something that's no longer on earth, but that we either know from the fossil record or can infer that we picture as had traits of both and then species came off it. We also talked about different forces of evolution. The first one being natural selection, which I think we talked about quite a bit. And then we talked about gene flow, where two populations that had been separate start to mix. 
Taci rize şu gün di korşe res, di karıyla ana sordu ni yela tadı imbacı, Angela kona ni para değil o di diyor res. We talked about the founder effect, where one or small number of individuals from mixed population becomes isolated, and a certain kind of tra trait then predominates in all of the next generation. So this red bug comes over and makes lots more red bugs. Whereas it had come from a mixed red and yellow population. Dila du chik sardey shugin e di chagyores di nar pesun di shayos dila du thanda bu seu da mau de de dos di nar thambu sorge na dila du kala yurin bu jela puran so saja loga chani ne sa loga chani mau de de ne thuen che ani di cha sha ana choling dosh thanda di nar ani yurin bu loga le du keda chik ra mang bu shitun ani di loga de de jo de de jil lagyores. We also talked about this idea of bottleneck. Where a parent population was a variety of traits, something happened though that randomly only a few survived. That then the chick from gay should get a dish yores, the career law and that humble so do nala, some much on your road yores, so the one button door, jell any chick to get to watch it gain any, than the dinala, so do nani cashes machine, malaya jura, so nichi to me, then the chick chad yores. The composition of the traits in that few uh, individuals then might change. How what's going to happen in future generations compared to how the population used to look before this bottleneck occurred? Dila du pumge thanda kenge thanda shugen stira di mati bola sodu jora di da anjela thame sodu jora dini la keba sugeres keba di kaal shur lana thanda dila sod sone chini sodu lama jora di sodu nam kandu yeme di ne dam tani di jo du yores. In human times, it turns out there was a mass extinction such that we were. For a while, an, an endangered species. In today's jigla, kare zadong shimbulan shiyu ras diga soni draw miya ta thanda thanda niri kumbu rig dende cha de yoji chai ras. It had to do, I think, with climate change and uh, glaciers and very cold. Ta di kare da draw cha gor lana nam shi jurdo da ani kya rum cha da thamu shu cha jora di kengi cha ras. So all of us here now came from a very small group of humans who survived that. There's also this idea of genetic drift, where just how you picked, uh, just randomly, if this is a, a green and yellow mix, you might pick a couple of different things. There's no natural selection next time you pick different. So the population might just drift back and forth between traits. The yuri ni do di damdu gala kar yeme chagyores kar damgyo me hau mares kabre keda chik di manga tungure kabre keda shimba di manga tungure sti la di chodu la jo du gure sti and then we talked about sexual evolution what's the right word sexual sexual selection where traits that have different genders um, one of the genders usually the male will evolve special traits to try to attract the female Dila duyda thanda dujo demdu do dina cha shawena po da mola ay res dina socha din jana ani po na cha shawena koran phelgu do ni khari urlo na top che oda din de che modi ku ge che de din de phelgu do she gyo jiyo res that might be by becoming very big and strong to protect his mates and his offspring an jigda chimbu da top chimbu cha di khari urlo na susu gi thanda teo che sa the sa di che em thana shi po go ra di samma ta ta jong che che de ni din de cha gyo gi res that might be by battling other males so that the winning male gets all the females. Yana kurani par dindur chira zingne zingne thobngin de ani thanda mo de da ani pugu samata bu ge yuras. That might be by the male looking very fancy so that all the females like him. Yana po de chimbu zbu yedu galap mo samma kuran da mile ne dinde yi si ras. They think that Asian men all came from like one very strong warrior. Ta thanda ngazu di chi khari shi or lana Asia yi mire jira. Then we came to the central dogma, which is DNA makes RNA makes protein. Then the seven namsha doora. This day now, how is she going to learn? DNA ni RNA do RNA ni any protein do go learn she raise. Here's our beautiful spiral again of DNA. Then that day, you so young, you must do as the DNA raise. These are the base pairs. These are the two big, bulky ones that can't can't match up with each other. And these are the two, um, these are the two on the DNA that are a little bit more smaller molecule. That then that one so pulse you as pulse on angi. The pulse that one, pulse the ni che on the rest. 
So this DNA always has these four bases. If this strand is what we call the gene, it eventually has a message that just looks just like it, except the T has become a U for uracil. And you can see the T is one of these smaller molecules. The uracil is the same. In fact, it just loses a methyl group here. So a T in the DNA is replaced, if this is the gene, the T in the gene is replaced by a U in the messenger RNA, the mRNA. This message leaves the nucleus because the stuff it needs to make protein is not in the nucleus. Once it delivers its message, and makes its protein product, it um, is degraded. It's not a permanent molecule like DNA. This is in keeping with the idea that it's reflecting the needs of the cell right that minute. So the message will come and then it'll go. DNA is there all the time in the nucleus waiting to send out whatever message the cell needs. Because cells need different things in different tissues, um, all the DNA is in every cell so that it can make any message that tissue needs. So in an individual, every cell has the same DNA. But the net messages that cell requires to make its appropriate proteins are different. In fact, researchers try to figure out what messages are made in what cells to cause that cell to look the way it does. And that requires very meticulous technique because it's easy to degrade RNA. But I can get DNA out of a man who's been buried under a glacier for 5,000 years. That's not a problem. So RNA is fragile, but that's a good property for what its job is. This kind of message RNA, there's other RNAs, but I'm just message RNA. So in a very clever way then, this message uses sets of bases, G's, T's or T's, whatever was on the original, to make a protein. So there's three, one, two, three, four, five. There's 15 bases here, and they've made five amino acids strung together like beads on a bracelet. So the message is conveying the information from the DNA by linking together amino acids that make the protein that that individual cell needs. 
Dila tu je ni nane suy nyaj yo di cila emari ni ni ma tiger dugu res. Di tiger di kita tiger tabun kangi la tiger kari gugu tu di kepa dugu res. In a, a red blood cell that's being born, the only message is hemoglobin, hemoglobin, hemoglobin. Tamar tabung do cha cha na di ni suy kari rang tangi urla na tabung di hemoglobin la tiger juas di rang tangi res. In a muscle cell, that may be a cell that's necessary for muscles to contract, called myosin. So the different cells are making different messages all the time. In order to fulfill the function of the cell by making the right proteins. Okay, so this is the central dogma, DNA, RNA, protein. Three bases at a time are telling the cell what amino acid to put in the protein. You have a table of what U, G, A, blah, make different amino acids. It's not important to know, just that bigger idea. It's handy to know that there's one that says start here, like the capital of a sentence, and one that says stop here, like a period. Okay. So this protein, that thing showed what, five amino acids? Proteins are hundreds of amino acids long. And the kinds of amino acids that get uh, strung onto this protein give it a shape. The placement of an incorrect amino acid can, a mutation can maybe leave the protein just the same. Not one mistake in amino acids because remember the third base can be the, uh, different and it's still the same amino acid. So a mutation can leave the protein just the same as it, as it was meant to be originally. A mutation can be inserted that doesn't look like the... A mutation can cause an amino acid to be put in that is not the correct one. Or an extra base can be put in or a base can be dropped out. In those cases, the whole sequence of three is shifted. In that case, the protein may not look like this at all and may not function well. However, However, there are mutations that can make a protein function better, and that's, you know, uh, that's the idea that the um, species can adapt to the environment um, and be more suitable generation after generation. Oh, did you say mutation makes the protein better sometimes? Yes, yes. So mutation can make things worse, make things better, or leave things the same. Like the mutation that 10,000 years ago gave the first blue-eyed person, uh, in some ways was a mutation uh, 
that it helped people who lived in the north. Next, we tried to talk about this brilliant monk, Gregor Mendel. His parents were farmers who didn't have the money to pay for a good education. His hope by becoming a monk was that he could also get a good education uh, and advance his learning. And he was quite brilliant in fitting his experiments to the things he had at hand. He wanted to understand what we now call genetics. It's probably not a good idea to pick as your model for genetics something that lives 50 years. Before it has its baby. Those would be very slow experiments. So he needed an organism that could he could manipulate the mating and he could he could do it in very short periods of time. He was a monk, so he needed something cheap, and he also then for his own experiments needed something easy. So he bred these peas that you've heard about from Megan. He bred peas that had only always, for many generations, just given purple to those that for only always had just given rise to white. And when you draw these squares, you can see these big P and little P represent alleles of the same gene. Just like blue eyes and brown eyes. You know that all the offspring in the first generation have to be the same genotype because these parents only have these alleles to offer. So everybody has to get a little P and everyone has to get a big P because that's what their parents are bringing. But now when you take these two purple, and everyone's purple, because you know now that this is a dominant allele. Now when you cross the two purple plants that you know came from that mating, you get different combinations because these peas can go with this, this can go with this, this can go with this, right? These two have the genotypes exactly of their grandparents. And these two are just like their parents. Because big P is dominant, three out of four will be purple. Because you can only get a white flower when both alleles are small P, one out of four is white. 
Tata da pi chunga ni imba ina me to kawo eras di la dugala shine chik karpo eras dina. And usually the simplest way to figure this out in any problem that might come up on any quiz <coughs> is to draw these. Takangi do chao na kyanzu i tatap deshu do le la shu kari chao le na di chao eras. Okay. Seu chases. We learned that there are diseases that result from a very simple single mutation. The nazar khashi juris di khare la na thanda yurdo chunju chigle ani di nazar di chavi eras. And that causes your red blood cell to make this form that's called a sickle cell. The thanda nazar cha cha wai na thanda ngazu thama thabu na eras thama thabu di khare chavi eras la wai na sorry thabu cha di eras di. If both of your alleles for this gene that's hemoglobin are for the sickle, that's a bad disease and it's fatal. Dila duta thanda sorry thabungi alleles ra di niga alleles niga thara imba ina an di kengu di nazar di kangi thi ani terong chingi dogu res. However, if you have one sickle and one normal kind of hemoglobin, you can be completely normal. Ta ina chik thanda alleles ni ra minal. In fact, that having a good and a bad copy of hemoglobin makes you resistant to this disease called malaria. So this bit of the environment, this malarial disease, is selecting for people who have one sickle and one normal copy for hemoglobin. The chesa malaria naza jura digi khari damgur lao ena thanda mi khande damgur lao ena khuran la chik thabung thanda elil thangbu yua che chik thanda sorib thabung yunge jura elil yunge dinde damgur res. Now that people from African descent live in places where there is no malaria, that sickle trait is of no advantage. Ta thanda Africa la nyama ima cha shao ena sodi na la thanda Dinner rig yung yedi, and a little chick, sorry, yung yedi, tambu yung yedi, zo kebe yer lara. That things I'm by Chasha and a cronzo such a shimbala dubures, such a shimbala malaria yomaris, and malaria medu that did under chick sorry tabu in a re, chick a little than the tambu dim banner, dinner yo and a kebe ke yomaris, pines na malaria yomaris, such a digilla. Yesterday, I think, yesterday we talked about the evolution of people. And he kissed on the me, Pelgur Korshe was. We are all now called we are all called homo anything we're called homo sapiens yeah but hominids we're called hominids we're in this family that shared this part this genus name Tanganzu homo sapiens re ngazu changma la khari lagyor la na hominids lagyor re ngaranzu changma gyuta wa na khari chagyor la na di homo sapiens da di re And this is going back in time to our original uh Ape-like ancestors. The Dili Ma Ma Jo and the Arazui Mebo Jura Dil Maliyores. And some of their names reflect where they came from: Australia, Kenya, Australia, Australia. That and the Kurunzu it has such a mean shashores. Then that the Khawan Ille me di tungyores. The Australia do chido as the Kenya chido as. How much the Australia chido as? But here is really you see these question marks. We don't know everything. But here is the one called Homo erectus. Where it was standing up on its back legs. That and the di di korshiras ha guyo maris di ming khari shayla na homo erectus la ni shay restaurant guidar niri nita hoy na di khari la na kampa ni galaya khabdu lang thungi jora dinde rig dress. This hominid, Homo neanderthalis, was in Europe way before our current species was. That and the ngazu niri jora di kingu la khari chuo la na Homo neanderthalis la di chuo dress di ngazu Europe na yo dress. This species came out of Africa and spread all over the world. This hominid, this Homo, this Neanderthal man also had a very big brain and existed when our species existed. For reasons that are still speculation, this one became extinct and we have now survived. So 
So right now the only species of man on earth is Homo sapiens. Chesanta me na la thanda gujura dinanta du wala kharil ha dur la na draw me dichu pul ha dur es. Unless you think Trump is taking us somewhere else. Ta ine kharan zoi khashi ya Trump gya sa sur le da di na khat ne da lo ras. But this Homo sapiens coexisted with other big-brained primate well, hominids like Neanderthal. Right now, though, we're all Homo sapiens. The last thing we talked about was this idea of examples of altruism and how might evolution think about that. Certainly it's easy to see how in species that have one young and care for it for a while that it's important for them to keep taking care of it until it can fend for its own. There are other solutions. There are animals that don't care for the young one bit. The female um, sea turtle goes to a great deal of effort to crawl out of the ocean, dig a giant hole in the sand, and lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs. She covers it up, she packs it nice, and then she says goodbye and goes back to the ocean. When those little eggs hatch, they're tiny versions of her. They look like exactly like small sea turtles. The trick is they have to crawl down the beach to the ocean, which they've never seen. They have to make it to the beach and not get picked off by birds. Once they get it to the ocean, they have to not get eaten by anything. So she starts out with hundreds with the idea that only a few are going to make it. But other species like us make fewer offspring and invest time taking care of them. And this is kind of a instinctive, something you can easily understand would be selected for. But then you heard about more hard to understand things like this bat. This bat, if it has a lot of food and it sees another bat that hasn't had any for a couple of days, throws up its food so that that bat can survive. So it offers a free meal to a bat uh, because it has enough itself. Is that in the hope that the other bats will do that for the bat that it has had a good food? Is this because this bat that just had a good meal knows that to keep the species alive we need lots of bats? Probably if we talked about it, we could come up with lots of ideas, but the idea is that this bat is helping out another bat. Well, that's all we got through this week, so uh, 
I hope it's enough. Tapije digas tigi gires ta dila di kanta digas tiros. We went from one cell to vomiting bats. Sorry. We went from one cell to vomiting bats. Dila de ta thanda onzu thabung ching ni an thanda phawang da di bodu la le ros ching ni go chu ni mangbu cha ros. Okay. Yeah, questions please. The two are yours. What do you feel is the hardest thing? Is it the DNA, RNA? Is it natural selection? Is there something that's especially um, not make sense? Gallic in the back there, please. Okay, is the number of AT and GC equal or unequal? Same. The number of A's and C's are the same, and the number of C's and G's are the same. Can I get you the AT and GC? You're going to get the AT and GC. You're going to get the AT and GC. You're going to get the AT and GC. Okay. But they don't use each base equally. Wherever there's an A, there's a T. So in the end, those two are equal. Wherever there's a C, there's a G. Mm -hmm. But in a gene, it can be lots of A's and T's or lots of C's and G's. So his question is about, um, is the number of AT uh, equal to number of GC? No. In fact, in different parts of DNA, there's a predominance of one kind of base pair or the other that lets you know a gene is coming. तो धंधे रिज़े खासे नाल तो दुगल तो रिज़े दिखाने चुए में खरील हागु और लाव ना फुल्जे खंडी मांगा दुला ने दी क्या बाहा हागु रेस छे जाम फुल्जे चिपा यो मरेस एटी द जीसी चिपा रेस लंचिरा चिपा यो मरेस इन द स्पेसेस बिटवीन जीन्स देर आर सर्टेन सिग्नल्स दैट आर लेटिंग द सेल नो हियर कम्स � So is there a particular sequence like there is AT and then GC and then AT and then GC like that? That could occur, but that's not um, necessary. It's it to us it would look random as to what these bases are. Ini dah tiga jam jora. Mangyung C jor wes lani. So, is there any fixed standard like we have to say, okay, in this DNA there will be this particular number of AT and this there will be this particular number of GC like that? Is there any fixed number? A just has to face a T, G has to face a C. That's the only rule. No, no, he said like, is there a number? Is there a fixed number which says, okay, there there should be this number of AT and there is this number of GC in that particular DNA? Just depends on what the gene is coding for. No fixed numbers of anything. Ali yo mares di DNA digi rigze kari yo me jora di la rali yo res ani digi thanda pulze jora di AT diga suri GC diga suri ani di thanga di yo mares. Next year you'll learn a lot more about this, like how messages will get what we call a poly A tail on them to mark them as a message. But that's way ahead of time. Di la duita kerana tu lo jemah janggir es, di hari korsinger lawan na datang ruas message di, di datang tu bala eh mangbu si kya bala ngama ro juma ro sini datang yo res, di datang aje pu res, dende yo res tu dalam ni, dende kor la kerana tu lo jemah singir es. So something like that is a signal to the cell that this is a message, and every message has a poly A tail, 
but that's not in a gene. A gene is just a bunch of bases. Dila du thanda di kar lana da tang shaju jora ne su nyange di cha dures and di nala e mangbu ji juma su ni cha shi dures di antha bung di kari ha kur lana le di ne su ji re shas lani ha kur dures lamsa di e mangbu jari di da tang tang shaju ji cha dures. Ani rigze na ke jeshi ana di nala rigze mangbu ji nyam du de dures. And we've made so much progress in being able to see genes within DNA because of computers. We could never do that by eye. That is why our DNA is not just a gene, it is 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 copy it and put it in a program and ask it what is this gene and you press a button and poof it pops up the answer ta simje jingi thanda di kengwe jingi lem bai na stra rigze de di len du gal di rigze di khane re shala du gal computer na nye ni yo roas an di baran chik nem nem den chigi ani thong gres di rigze di simje de ne re shala thong gyo res i'm so glad you are all asking us questions it's really makes me know you're still here gao chu sus Kiranzo itu apa tangguh dos? Di lalu kiranzo zina na yo hago dos. Ini cerita tizi kau ni, ane tizi kau ni, ane mana tizi? Tizi kau ni, ane kau ni cuma dos dia. Ane ni, mana di ni kau hago, hago ni di ni kita, ane ni mesin, ane mana mesin ni, ane ane ni mana ane tizi masuk dos. Tapi masuk dos ni, ane ni mesin, ane mana ni mesin, tizi. ดีนี่ก็สักครั้งเกี่ยวกับเรื่องนี้ทั้งหมดอย่างพวกที่เรียนมาเนี่ยอันนี้ครั้งเกี่ยวกับเรื่องที่ชีวิตอันนั้นที
tun gugurela ni thanda dudul jora di gida tigres an nugget nugget tungi gi thanda rigze cha de jora di an khoran jo se yores ya long yores ra so sometimes in experiment people will take cells that are known to have breast cancer and those that are healthy breast tissue cells ta thanda cha sha na chik thanda nume gi teng gi thanda naza jora di che chik thangbu imba cha sha as mini yores and they look at the rna from the sick cells compared to the rna from the healthy cells ta thanda neba ni rna chik lingres thana shi mi thangbu ni rna lingros And in that way they see the message is that they think may be related to causing the disease in this case breast cancer in that cell. Dilla du di arene thambu yo da neba ni ga stairs and neba dinal arene ta du bala ta di khari kingi ani di neba cha du slani di arene di ta bio res. So they just look at messages in the sick cells that in the uh, breast uh, in the cancer cells that are expressed too much or too little and try to figure out what's causing the cancer. Nisu khari dus lani thanda dene nengi neba jora di nalo nisu dil ta gyores di kengi naza sur lang di ta je shiyores So that's how these things are used the sequence of RNA sequence of proteins etc Che zanta di thanda tiger gi thanda khurim da thana shi RNA gi khurim dinde phiju chiyores So you might see in someone who's missing mitochondria maybe all the gene all the messages to make mitochondria are, are pushed down ตะเปชาวนะมิจีนาลันดานุเกทาดูเจสตูเมวนาสรานดีเกตริกเซดิทันดานิชูดิตาวนาดีนาลคารทุงุรลานะนุเกทาดูมาทุงเกตานิจู
Is that a little better? I, it's, it's a hard idea, huh? Did this couple you receive a chance with us? Yes. So when you talked about the length of hair and uh, okay, about the strength of a person, uh, we didn't get the clear answer whether it is uh, heredity or not. So sickle, sickle cell is a beautiful example of one mutation clearly makes a certain um, thing that you can see, this sickling. Scientists can make mice that have one gene change that have some clues as to uh, how much uh, something we see is genes or environment. They've changed a single gene and the mouse that has that gene is called mighty mouse. So even if that mouse never exercises, even if it no matter what kind of food it gets, it tends to have good muscles. But that's because it's in a back, it has a background of a million other genes that they haven't changed. There are almost no traits like sickle cell trait where you get such a clear effect from a single gene. Most traits are many genes working together. I think there's no question that my children will ever be able to jump or be big or be strong like LeBron James. Brown James less Quran do chum tu mares kadu in by nangi di she tu res. Do you know LeBron James? Brown James lana swim baha hu yes kares. Big basketball player, big strong. And the silver thing is suburimbu top chumbu jures. But my children uh, could, if they work out and lift weights and run, they could certainly grow their muscles. Nengi pu do chasha ina Quran lose shoot se ina shani din do chero do yo ras Quran do res. The big muscles that they acquire by working out hard, that part won't be inherited. But maybe the desire to have big muscles or the good health to be able to grow big muscles when you train could be inherited. Very few traits that you see are just by one gene. So we just have, that's why we always teach blue eye, brown eyes, or a sickle cell. And you can argue for long times about whether a certain personality trait or a certain attribute is a product of the environment or just a product of DNA. That's maybe an unsatisfying answer, but I think it's the best we could say right now. Yep, here, see? You know it's a, a, you know it's a bad answer if, if Megan's coming up. <laughs>
तो ले लिया वो मैं हाँ खुद और मैं गिन लेती हूँ से लें क्या Uh, when it comes to hair, uh, it depends on what we mean when we say hair length. If tiring se le jara, di la di thun ganju gita khande jil lagu me di ha bu ras thamonye. If we're talking about whether I choose to have my hair long or if I choose to shave it short like a nun, um, that's a choice that's not in my genes. Di la di tiring se jara. If we're talking about the ability to grow my hair long, I think that if I never cut my hair, it would probably grow to about there. But I know that there are women who, if they don't cut their hair, their hair can go all the way down to their ankles, and that is a product of their genes, so it's inherited, and also what we eat. तो तो ना अंजू रोचा शो ना दिगस दिगस टा रिंगली दिगस रिंसे दिगस ली तो तुप शेगे हो रास तो खासे घरे हो लाना रिंगु शूज सान इटा खगस ली लाना कहाँ को थोया दिने ली हो रास दिन जो अन्य कोरान जो रिंसे ना हो रास दिगे रिंग दे दे अन्य मार जुदान चीज़ हो रास and that ability to grow hair will change over time I used to have beautiful thick yellow hair to here and I can't do that anymore टा रिंगु साये जो रा दी निबर लाये छाक दी हो रास रिंगु साये � इंटेलिजेंसिटेड Uh, how come an intelligent father has a dumb child? <laughs> Intelligence is again both. You're born with some. I would make it a non-inherent. I mean, I would make it uh, mostly environmental. I mean. Yeah, it, it it's both. Um, some children can learn very very quickly. Others, it's a little harder. But we also know that the brain is like a muscle. The more you use it, the better it gets, and the more intelligent you become. So his question is: Is it inherited or not? Uh, so both, right? You're inherited with some natural starting ability, but then it's what you do during your life if you practice and work that muscle of your brain, if it for it to get stronger and faster. The judon chiyo ras lejer nam ju di niga lejer ras this judon chiyo chay thawa nashi ang anju gi thanda nam ju di khandes chay or lau na leba di khagas pejo chiyo di chiyo ras. There's a basic level of health that has to be there before you can talk about intelligence. So there are certain abnormal chromosomes where those children will never have normal intelligence. Dila duta thangbo choding gan ge taya jores. Dis hamat sang oye na an bidi thangbo res lan shi jores. Ta thangbo kora neta du gal pogo cha shi oye na thanda chubong ta du gal chubong kora yunde main baji na chugen shi oye jina kora nam jo dimba cha yu mares. But it appears that we're quite plastic. If there's a certain level of health, uh, clearly the more training you get, the more your parents, if they're intelligent, they probably value education, will offer you education. If your parents used to were good piano to play, they will teach you when you're young. Those kinds of things are also contributed from your environment. It appears genetic because your parents value the same things that they're going to give you to try to learn. The person who is just right. Pama lupjung ya puyung ye shen shen jin jin bai nas pula su su shen ye du ma ting ruas pula. An di pugu di ni koriu di ni roshtu ni pugu di kaj jong da mang bu chin ni an lupjung ya pu chai di ni yung bu yores. Tang nan shi pama di zu roshtu piano ya. Piano ya pu tang ye yin bai nas di ye an pugu la lang ni an pugu piano ya pu tang shi ni di koriu di shu ding di ting yu ruas chi. Given that uh, maintaining a healthy body is really important for intelligence, I think we should go have tea. Yeah. <laughs>